Hello and welcome to another episode of the Amazon Unfiltered podcast. Today we're joined by John Tilly, the founder of Zonguru. John, I'm super excited to have you on today. What's up, Seif? Nice to meet you. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely unfiltered, so it's a good name. It'll, it'll work well for today. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So I have actually been spending some time researching you in preparation for this podcast, and you actually have a very interesting backstory. So I don't give, why don't you give our listeners like a three, four minute backstory for how you got into this space and maybe why you started Song Group? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, it, it's not that interesting of a background, but uh, in, you know, the accent is, is South African originally. I, I, was, I grew up in Johannesburg uh, and uh, my original career was in advertising. So uh, I worked for some kind of top a digital agencies uh, globally, uh, starting in, in South Africa. And then I moved to London for a few years and then, and then moved to Los Angeles. Um, and, uh, yeah, I had a, had a pretty, um, kind of high level career, uh, in, in the digital agency marketing world with, with some top brands. Uh, and then in 2014, uh, I discovered Amazon. I went to a, a, a conference in Vegas by chance and, uh, the penny drop for me where, where I, I saw it as an opportunity to, um, you know, start selling products, um, and, and, and moving out of services and, uh, and scaling that. So, uh, you know, I did the typical side hustle, uh, and, and within about a year, I launched a few brands. Uh, I did really well, uh, with my own brands on Amazon, um, and, uh, exited the, the, the kind of the, the nine to five gig. And then, um, you know, through that process, uh, in 2017, I launched Zonguru as an operations tool set for sellers. Um, and, and really it was, it was about, um, looking at the, the software that was out there at the time and understanding that, um, you know, answering the right business questions in the right way in, and in the most impactful way with data, uh, was something that was missing in the space. So that was really our focus was, was, you know, less of a shiny object syndrome and more about like, what is the right data to focus on that's most impactful that we can deliver in the most efficient way. And that's how, how we started on Guru. So, you know, we've been going for a few years, we have a global audience, we have 17 different tools. Um, and, uh, and, um, you know, we, we, we service both, um, you know, SMB, um, private label sellers in the global Amazon marketplaces, as well as agencies, uh, and aggregators, um, you know, that use our software to, to grow their clients, brands or, or their own brands. So, um, yeah, that's us in a nut nutshell. Um, and obviously we'll get into it, but we have out of all of our tools, we have, uh, you know, we, we, are very industry leading in, in certain tools, uh, for sure. That's very interesting. Well, you're pretty big in the listing optimization and SEO space. So, you know, a lot of the Amazon sellers we work with, frankly, do nothing for SEO. Maybe they throw in a couple of keywords that they found from Cerebral, like, you know, a year or two ago when they first made their listing but none of them are actively doing anything for SEO. So if you were speaking to a seller that's like medium sized doing maybe early seven figures that currently doesn't have an SEO process set up, what would be like the first steps they should take to kind of get things started? Yeah, that out of all our tools, our flagship tools are around keyword intelligence and um, listing optimization. Uh, you know, and, and at a high level, if you look at your Amazon business, right, you know, clearly, you know, the, the things that are going to drive your business to be scalable and, and, and to really grow is going to be number one, do you have a great product? You know, everyone talks about that. You've got to have a decent product. So check that off. Uh, number two, can you stay in stock? You know, that's obviously a critical thing. And, and hopefully you, you grow your business to a place where you've got some consistent consistency about staying in stock, which is important. Number three, it's going to be, okay, how do you, how do you maximize the potential of your Amazon listing? which is the heartbeat of your, your storefront, right? And so understanding how do you maximize your listing for, for awareness and, 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 and visibility, which is your SEO focus. And then obviously for conversion, which is the creative, you know, customer connection focus, uh, that's a critical piece of, of your business. And then, and then the final piece is, is if you really are truly scaling, um, if you can go beyond Amazon and, and uh, you know, start to, to be more D to C, or have some omni-channel presence that can help, you know, circulate and drive traffic to your different, uh, you know, platforms. That's where you truly become an e-commerce brand uh, and you can, and you can scale. So, you know, that's the, the evolution of, of your Amazon business for sure. Um, in terms of the, if we focus on the, on the SEO piece, right, it's, it's, it's understanding uh, at a basic level that um, 
you need to first identify and find uh, the keywords that you want to focus on for, for your listing, right? And so uh, that's where keyword intelligence comes into play. And, and what I would say is, uh, you know, don't just use software that, that kind of reverse index looks at, at what other competitors are indexing for, because that doesn't really showcase what are actual, actual customers typing to Amazon in that localized market. And I think that's one of the differences of our tools. Like we really focus on not just, you know, hey, this is what everyone is indexing for, but what are customers actually typing into Amazon? Um, so, so finding the keywords and then understanding from, from an algorithmic perspective, uh, what are the keywords that, that I want to focus on um, and how do I make sure that that um, focus is, is communicated to the algorithm, right? So, you know, what, once you know what the keywords are, how do you... Um, you know, focus on the ones that, that match your products, which have high search volume, but also what are some of the opportunistic keywords that your competitors haven't found that you want the algorithm to focus on. So, you know, that that's what you're really doing from an SEO perspective um, and, and maximizing the potential of your listing. And then how you match it with PPC is, is, a, is a different conversation. Right. Let's, let's break it down for our listeners. So like what's step one, two, and three, like what products do I start working on? Because if I have a large catalog, I might not do all products at the same time. Uh, what keywords do I pick? Am I picking keywords that I'm already ranked for, but maybe not like one to 10, maybe I'm ranked 20 to 40. Am I picking keywords I'm not showing up for at all on the first page? Uh, where do I put those keywords once I find them? What's like the first three steps if you had to break yeah. it down? First yeah, I, I, you know, clearly if you have a number of different ASINs, um, you know, if, if I'm the business owner, uh, I would want to focus on my flagship ASINs and make sure that they maximize for SEO. Uh, you know, at a high level, how the algorithm works, it's, it's not rocket science. It's basically, um, you know, if you, if you place keywords in your listing, starting with your title, bullets, description, uh, you know, back in search terms, if you, if you place it in those areas, um, if, if someone searches for that keyword and then they convert on that keyword, the higher up you have that keyword in your listing, um, the, the more juice you'll be giving or the more indica indications you'll be giving to the algorithm that that's a, uh, you know, that that's a, a word that you should be ranking for and it will, it will push more SEO juice to that, to that keyword, right? So you want to make sure that in your listing, you, you're, you're placing your most relevant, that's important, a relevant term because it's got to be relevant for your product, your high converting, relevant, high volume search terms higher up in your listing, right? Um, title first, obviously. Um, and then you also want to find, um, you know, understand how competitive those keywords are, right? Because sometimes obviously your most relevant high volume terms, there might be a lot of competition around those keywords and that's fine. You need to have them in your listing and you need to have them higher up in your listing. But if you can find keywords that are very relevant, that have, you know, you know, mid, mid volume search, search volume, then that a lot of your competitors haven't found yet or don't rank well for. And you have those in your listing and, and you can focus the algorithm around that you, you kind of create this halo effect where where you know you get better conversion rate for those keywords and that kind of lifts your whole ranking for all of your keywords right so at a high level that's the, the strategy you know optimize your listing for your high volume most relevant terms starting with your title bullet description back end search terms um, and then also find uh you know find or at least use software that can find you opportunistic keywords that your competitors haven't found or don't rank for and make sure you have those in your listing and that you drive traffic to that for through PPC or whatever so that you get better conversion rate. So um, that's the that's the process. How you do it is, is you would use a tool like Keywords on Fire, which is our keyword intelligence tool, which will show you, hey, the you know, for your category, for your niche, here's all the, the most relevant keywords that you should be, you know, including in your listing. So you'll find all of those. You would obviously filter that by your most relevant high volume keywords. And then you, you also have an overlay of a competitive layer where you can also say, hey, you know, based on my main key, uh, competitors, what are the, you, you can use the filters to go, hey, show me all the keywords that have decent search volume that my main competitors don't rank for on page one. And then you can use that list and find, you know, um, you know opportunistic keywords and make sure your listing has got those in. So that's, that's kind of the, the, the strategy we, we do in terms of adding keywords to your listing. How you, how you write your listing, and this is another uh, important piece, is there used to be this idea of, of kind of overstuffing your, your listing where 
essentially you have exact match keywords and you you repeat them you have them in your title variations of that and you, you you kind of write them and stuff them into your listing as much as possible while trying to make sense of of, of the the copy content right what we see works better is actually exact matching for your main uh you know a few of your main terms which is important but then really broad matching for for uh, as many terms as you can your title um and then your first couple of bullet points right so when i say broad matching it's obviously you know you can the words don't have to be next to each other as long as um they broad match uh, on the title or in the in the first few bullets uh, that's going to really help your algorithm and that allows you to make a lot more competent sense of your listing in terms of how you write it right do you have a certain cadence for swapping keywords out like if you have like a focus keyword does it like move into the title then once you start moving up maybe you move another keyword into the title you move this down to the bullet points or how do you like swap focus keywords does that make sense yeah it makes sense um there's no there's no there's no real cadence i, th I think the, the 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 bigger point on that is is understanding that seo of your listing goes goes hand in hand with your ppc right and, and how do you you know how are you driving sales from ppc and more importantly as you drive sales with ppc and you're getting conversion rate how how is that impacting your organic ranking right and so it's not a cadence thing but it's more about like understanding the conversion rate of your keywords and and if you for example have a specific keyword that's higher up in your listing um you have a focus on that on your ppc and you your conversion rate is typically higher than the average conversion rate for that niche you're doing really well, well with that keyword and you've identified potentially another keyword that's that's um you know uh, my, my first plan of attack on a, on a, on a second keyword, if, if, uh, if I want to really drive the ranking or, or the, the, the conversion rate is to focus that on PPC. So have it in my listing, but have it really, uh, you know, a PPC focus and seeing if I can get the conversion rate up. Um, and typically if you get the conversion rate up and it's a decent ranking, uh, you know, conversion rate, and even if I push my ACOS up, I will start to drive the organic rank of that keyword. Right. So that would be my first point of call. Um, you know, if it needs additional help, you could potentially look at moving that keyword up in your listing. Um, but you know, generally I wouldn't, I wouldn't swap it with, with my better performing keywords. I would just move it slightly up, but I, my, my first point of call would be PPC, um, on that, on that focus. Yeah. Right. Do you have like a specific setup when it comes to PPC in terms of match types, ad types, any campaigns you're setting up to help you get ranked faster? Um, you know, at a high level, and, I, and I'm, I'm not going to pretend just being a, a full PPC expert, we have people on our team that are, but at a high level, um, you know, we, we follow a few different strategies. One is, uh, you obviously have your, your manual campaigns for, for, your, um, for your, your, your main keywords, and we, we treat match type as different uh, terms, and we give them a different bid, right? We don't, we don't just say exact phrase and broad it at you know, we don't, we, we treat them as separate keywords. That's important because it gives you a lot of fix, flexibility around your campaign. So that's number one. Uh, number two is we, we, we set up a few different automatic campaigns um, to find keywords. And, and the reason why we do different automatic campaigns is that we can set different bid amounts, which help you find keywords at different bid uh, kind of uh, 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 spheres, I would say, right? And, and that's a better way of like, uncovering keywords. Um, you have obviously higher bid keywords, but then lower, lower bid keywords and, and it finds different keywords for you that you can then obviously test and put into your manual campaigns. Um, and then and then obviously we have our, our, our general uh, manual campaigns and we focus on, uh, you know, ones that are, um, you know, uh, uh, research focused that might not have as, as much of a conversion rate, that, but that might help with attribution and then and they get conversions. So we separate that out and then we, we really truly focus around the, the, the high converting keywords that we know we need to drive and, and we can push the ACOS up on those, right? Because we know that, you know, if for your higher converting keywords, if we can push the conversion rate up, even if the ACOS is higher, it's going to help with organic ranking, which, which then settles you on your tacos, right? So um, that's the general structure we, we focus on. And then the last one is obviously those opportunistic keywords. So if we do find opportunistic keywords, making sure that we have a manual campaign that can drive traffic to those keywords that your main competitors don't rank for so we can really push the conversion rate up 
that helps to spike the algorithm. It's like, oh, we're getting better conversion rates and it, it kind of helps create this halo effect where everything starts to organically rank better. Right. Any fun SEO tips and tricks? I know some people like put Spanish terms in their backend, which apparently are easier to rank for. Anything of that nature that you guys have found that works? Yeah, look, I mean, in our software, we, we actually can show you the backend search terms for, for any listing. Um, I would definitely say that that what we find in our keyword uh, on Fire tool is that is that because we focus on the localized keywords, we tend to uncover um, a lot of what customers are typing to the localized markets. So whether that's Spanish in the U.S. markets, uh, you know, whether it's you know, uh, you know, kind of um, kind of local uh, slang style words in different markets, Germany, France, etc. We uncover those, um, and you definitely should include them in your listing. Um, you know, back in search is a great place for that. Sometimes you can even, you know, include it in some of your, your bullets, um, you know, as need be. So, um, I would say, uh, you know, that's, that's not a fun trick. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything, uh, there that, that is fun about it. I, I would say, um, I mean, the, the, the most fun part about SEO, I would say right now is obviously, uh, the, the chat GBT integration that we have, um, we were the we were the world's first um, company in the Amazon software space to integrate with ChatGPT. I think we're industry leading for sure in that space. But um, you know what's great about it is is literally in a minute you'll get a baseline that is typically thirty percent better optimized than your your best competitors in that niche. So your baseline optimization score is better, and it's just the way that we find the keywords, but we tell the ChatGPT uh, you know AI to write a listing. It, it really matches well for SEO. Um, but then you have the ability to power prompt it. Uh, you can do tone of voice, language, um, you know, humor. Um, you know, you can even you know, um, you know, put, you know, tell it to write it in, in, in specific ways for specific bullets, etc. So you can have a lot of fun with um, how you want to write the listing um, and, and be creative with it, so that you really engage with your with your um, customers. So that that's a that's an interesting fun part about it. One other trick I would say uh, that is critical is, is understanding that SEO goes hand in hand with obviously conversion rates and, and connection that you have with your audience, right? And so um, you've got to write your listing to obviously maximize for keywords, but then you really have to think about how can you write the listing to emotionally connect with your customer. So emotional connection with the customer is, is obviously based on product attributes for sure, but understanding, you know, what do they really love or hate about a product is, is important. And, and we have a tool called the love hate tool uh, for for obvious reasons, uh, but it focuses on on a word cloud AI assimilation of the positive and negative sentiment for um, that category based on reviews. So you know that's a really good tool that you can use to understand what really connects with customers. What do they hate about products that you need to call out and show how you improve it, or, or obviously what do they love and make sure that you you call that out. So that will help you with customer emotional connection and obviously conversion rate, which which is also a really important part of SEO, right? Perfect. So how do you, I guess, check and report on your SEO? Do you have like um, Excel or Google Sheet set up or you track ranking week over week? And I guess what time horizon do you usually expect to get results in? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, we don't use Excel or anything. We use our software, right? It's all built into Zonguru. Um, we, we have a number of things that we use for, for tracking the effectiveness of listing optimization. One is obviously keyword tracking. Um, so understanding um, you know, organic rank, uh, position, um, and, and how that's impacted by your, your optimizations. Um, uh, number two is we, we, uh, we have a traffic dashboard, um, which is purely focused on sessions and conversion percent, um, you know, for, for your whole account or for specific ASINs. Um, so, so that's obviously a, a critical piece to understand. Like if I've done an optimization, do I see that my session percentage is increasing, right? Which means you're getting more traffic to your listing, which is great. But then how does that, you know, how is that impact impact about conversion percent? And if I'm doing my job right on SEO and obviously on PPC, I can get better conversion rate, which is going to help uh, drive the business. So, you know, that, that we have historically, and you can look at that. So, so that's number two. And then obviously, you know, you have to have a, your finger on your pulse on ACOS and tacos, understanding, um, you know, by, by keyword, you know, by, by term, uh, what does your ACOS look like? Um, and, and which are the ones that I'm willing to spend more on 
um, you know, because I know it's going to help with conversion rates overall. So those are kind of the main factors that, that we look at in terms of traffic, uh, tracking, um, uh, you know, effectiveness of SEO. The one other thing that we do have is we do have an event tracking tool that you can track for, you know, price changes, listing changes, you know, buy box loss, gain, whatever, you know, it tracks all the events on your listing, but we embed that into the sales and traffic dashboards. So you have an indicator that you can always go back to and you can look at it and say, Hey, you know, why, why is my session percent percentage going up? Oh, cause that's, we did a listing optimization then. Right. And so you have the ability to have historical uh, events uh, embedded into your dashboard. So you can, you can remember, or at least uh, be guided as to what happened at that point and, and give you context around it. That's interesting. What are some of the common SEO mistakes um, that you see most others make? Uh, I think the, the common mistake I would say is that, you know, people, one, uh, don't identify the right keywords, right? I, I think understanding, um, you know, what are the right keywords that I should have in my listing and, and what are the ones, more importantly, that I want to drive conversion rate for, right? And, and understanding what's the difference between, you know, research keywords and then, and then obviously your, your, your converting buy keywords, right? And, and how do you put those into a listing? I think people don't have a, a, a good enough concept of what that is and, or at least are not using the right software to identify what those are. Um, and, and we make a difference there. So I think that's number one. And then I think the biggest mistake on top of that is, um, is, is not, is not aligning your SEO optimization with your PPC. Um, you know, that's a critical piece that, that you have to get right, which is, you know, think about, um, when you launch a product, right? The, the number one mistake people make when they launch a product is they don't have all the right tactics and strategies in place to really, you know, give, give the algorithm as much juice as it can and as much uh, traffic and energy as it can in that two week period where it's really figuring out how you rank, right? It's, it's the honeymoon period and you've got to, you've got to launch and you've got to go guns blazing with everything to really drive um, and, 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 you know, trigger the algorithm to start ranking you. And that goes the same as, you know, later on, if you're doing a, 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 an optimization to a current listing um, and you make all your optimization changes, but then you're not really driving any traffic in the right way to the, the terms to start to spike the conversion rate and strike the algorithm, right? And so if you're not aligning those two, you can miss that window of opportunity where the algorithm is kind of re reconfiguring its alignment with, with the change you've made to your account. Uh, and then, you know, it doesn't get the right indicators and then you miss the vote and it's not ranking right. So you've got to make sure that you align, um, you know, changes that you make to your, your listing with, with, you know, your focus on traffic drivers. So if you make changes, you know, you've got to push your ACOS and, and, your, and your, your budget on PPC around the terms that you really want to focus on, whether they're your main terms or your, uh, your new opportunistic keywords that you've added or whatever it is, you've got to give... Uh, give that algorithm some spike, right, to, to start to rank better. So I think that's probably the biggest SEO mistake that the people make is they don't, they don't align the optimizations with PPC. Right. It's good you mentioned PPC because actually almost every week now I get contacted by like old school stutters that launched, you know, 10 years ago, maybe even 15 years ago. A lot of these stutters are just used to launching products and having them rank, right? And in the early days, like you could keyword stuff, a lot of Chinese sellers still do this. You could just keyword stuff and you'd start getting indexed for a lot of different keywords and the sales would come in organically. And PPC wasn't really that big of a ranking factor. So obviously SEO has changed a lot over time. So I'm curious, like, what do you think the future of SEO will be like, especially with like AI improving a bunch of other listing tools coming out and even the changes that Amazon's making to the platform right now? Yeah, it's a good question, right? I, I think... Number one, I, you know, the, the algorithm on, on Amazon hasn't changed much in the, in the last while. I think, you know, the, the, the specific mathematical factors that go into the algorithm is, is, has stayed the same over a long period of time. Um, in terms of how much importance they give to, to each of those factors, whether there's 10 factors going in, whether it's, you know, the, the quality um, health score of your listing or, or reviews or, uh, you know, whatever it is, I, they have changed the importance of those over time, depending on what they're trying to do to match their own business internal um, directives and goals, right? But overall, it's, you know, it, it's pretty similar. 
there has been talk of, of an, a pretty substantial update to the algorithm in the future, which would be more around changing the customer experience, which is like, you know, you buy not just based on what you're searching for, but, but what are your likes and your hobbies and interests, right? And, and trying to bring more of that into your search experience. Um, whether that comes out or not, we'll, we'll see. But that has, there has been some indicators around that. Um, you know, in terms of um, AI and how, how that's going to impact the space, look, I think, you know, it, it goes into the, you know, the idea of getting a, a baseline, well-optimized listing uh, that's, that's written in, in a way that matches the algorithm. Obviously, if more people use tools like ours that are written for that, you know, everyone's listings are going to get better. Um, and, and, and as I see it, that's probably a good thing because customers have a better opportunity to find different products. Um, where I think sellers can make the difference is really, you know, understanding that, okay, now they can get a baseline listing in, in under one minute. Great. So, you know, they've, they've got that, but then what do they do with that time that they've saved? And I would say, you, you know, the more t the time that they've saved, they can put that into the creative aspect of a listing their expertise, understanding, researching their, their customer, their avatar, what connects better with them and using more of that business acumen and smarts to put that into your listing to make it 110% better. That's where you're going to stand out from anybody else uh, in the crowd, right? And, and that's frankly where you should be standing out is like, how do you be creative with your listing? How do you show that the, the understanding of your, your customer is brought through in your listing uh, into those images, uh, you know, content, etc. Um, and that's typically what most sellers on the platform are not going to do, right? So that's where you you have your advantage. Um, you know, save time on the base baseline of a listing with 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 AI, ChatGPT, and then spend that additional time saved, really pushing your listing to that next level, which which is critical. All right, that makes sense. I'm going to ask more about the AI stuff since that's super interesting. I also work in AI myself, but before that, I wanted to ask like, what are the actual ranking factors? Oh, I've got to remember off the top of my head. I mean, uh, I did a couple of posts on LinkedIn on this, but, um, you know, it's, it's everything from, you know, clearly conversion rate is always the number one factor. Um, you know, session percent is important. Review rates, uh, you know, health score. Um, you know, there's about 10, 10 factors that go into it. I, I can't rattle them off the top of my head. I, I don't know if you, if I missed any uh, big ones there, but those are, those are kind of like the main ones that, that still are important in, in, in factoring, um, SEO. But that makes sense. Uh, you mentioned the listing building tool that you guys have built. Can you maybe explain a bit more about how that works? Like, are we just doing bullet points, titles, and maybe what the future looks like? Because I know a lot of people are using AI to do image generation now. And maybe that's something interesting, I guess, that a lot of sellers will start testing soon. Yeah, sure. You know, our listing builder tool called listing is called the listing optimizer tool. Um, you know, we, we made a difference in this space uh, a couple of years back and we still kind of uh, own that area, which is this idea of contextual SEO. So we, you know, within our tool, we don't just tell you, hey, these are the keywords that you should be optimizing for, optimize your listing. We give you the context uh, and the ability to add competitors to see how well they optimize versus your listing. So for example, within our tool, you can load your listing, you can load any of your main competitors and then, um, you know, the intelligence within the tool will score that listing based on the keywords that you've, that you've added and tell you which listing is better optimized for the algorithm, right? So that's a very important metric because it's really good for sellers to be able to understand, you know, on page one, who's the best optimized listing? What are they scoring for? What keywords are they focusing on? And then how do I improve my listing to be better optimized than my main competitors? So I can check that. I can scratch that itch. I can check it off and say, hey, I've got the best li optimized listing on page one versus my competitors. I know I've maximized my potential. Let me go focus on PPC, et cetera. So that's one of the critical differences of our tool that we've always owned, which is contextual SEO. Um, and then the, the second piece is obviously the, the AI piece. Um, and so within the tool, you can, you know, obviously load your own current listing. You can load a listing from scratch, you know, a blank listing, whatever you want to do. And then you can use AI, uh, number one, to write a listing from scratch and you can just hit, hit a button. Uh, you have some, some power prompting features that you can add, you know, you can give it, um, you know, product awareness, you can choose language, you can choose tonality, uh, you know, you can, 
you can uh, add specific keywords, you can negative match on certain keywords that are against terms of service. So there's things that you can customize in the fields and then you just hit AI generate and it will write the whole listing uh, from the from the content perspective. So title, bullets, description, back in search terms, it will fill that out. Um, and then you have the ability to then, um, you know, look at how well that, that listing is written. As I said, it's typically about 30% better optimized than the best listings on page one, but it'll show you where you've organic, where you've matched uh, exact and, and broad matched within the listing. And then you can, you can manually customize it. You can change things. Uh, you can also AI prompt any specific field to rewrite that, that title. Um, you can just rewrite it totally, or you can even power prompt it. You can say, Hey, write it and focus on these benefits at the beginning and make it this character count. So just like with chat GBT, you can power prompt within, within the, within the, um, you know, the interface. So it's pretty powerful. Um, it allows you to, to kind of, you know, re-optimize current listings and be very specific about what you want to optimize and what you want the, 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 the AI to focus on, or you can write things from scratch and, and get that baseline. So, um, and then once you've written it and you're happy with it, you can actually hit a button and you can publish it directly to Amazon through the platform. So you don't even have to just download a CSV and upload it to, to Amazon. You can just do it all within the platform. So it's, it's very fast and efficient in, in terms of what it does. And we see about a 20% a little bit above about across our customer base that in terms of uh, revenue uh, increase once they've done the optimization because of how well it optimizes for the algorithm so you know that's what the ai does really well it it, it understands you know what are the keywords and then how to write a listing so that it matches in the right way for seo for the algorithm right um, and then obviously you can you can manually um, finesse it further you know as you need to so that's what we focused on um I would say in the in in the future, you know, certainly images is going to become part of that. Um, right now, I don't think images are at the the level I would say is is, is for for product, right? Because um, you, you've obviously got a specific product. Um, what I think uh, is really interesting is using AI to brainstorm around different product angles. We know that obviously going back to the algorithm, like you know, clicks that you get, click rates uh, onto your main image. Uh, and then conversion is, is critical. The click rate is, is important. And so your, your, your number one search image is still a, a major player in, in all of that. And if you can use AI to brainstorm and be creative around different angles uh, and, and ways that you could come up with, uh, I think that's a good input into your photography team for whatever they shoot, right? So that's how I would use AI right now. But down the road, for sure, it's going to, you know, it's going to be, become a big piece of that. Video is already part of that, um, you know, EVC A plus content that's going to be part of it. Uh, you know, it'll write all of that for you, um, and then you can finesse it further, right? So, you know, certainly all of that, anything that's that's uh, content uh, driven, um, AI is going to is going to own that uh, over the next while. Right. No, it sounds amazing. I used to write those things myself back when I had less on my plate, and it would take a few days. Like I'd spend a few days reading reviews and a few days watching YouTube videos out the product and a few days studying competitors. Then I draft my first, you know, uh, version of my bullet points and my titles and I'd have to edit it and I'd pass it on to someone else to read it and let me know what they think from their perspective. So no, it sounds amazing. Like just throw everything in, click a couple of buttons and it all comes up. Yeah. And, and that's and, and importantly, yeah, that, that day of work or, three hours of work or however long it's taking you to write a listing, you save that immediately with, with AI, because it's going to write that baseline listing. What it also saves you is, is, you know, a lot of sellers tell me about the procrastination time that they had before, which is like you, you, before you like, Oh, okay. I'm gonna have to spend 12 hours doing a listing. So sometimes you might procrastinate on, on when you actually get the time to sit down and do that. And, and that's immediately evaporated, right? Cause you just get, you just literally plug it in and you get, you get your baseline. But then I think it's really important to understand that that's a baseline that you then should put your expertise on. Don't just push that out to Amazon, right? You've got to use that as a baseline to then finesse it, bring your expertise, you know, your understanding of the customers, reading reviews, what it, or using love, hate, our tool, whatever it is, you know, use that to get insights and then really finesse it further, power prompt the AI or manually write it and, and get it into a better spot. Right. Our last question is a bit of a fun one. Uh, Amazon has been running a lot of different split tests. Using AI, we've seen them aggregate and summarize reviews. We've seen them create like little checkboxes for product attributes based on sentiment from reviews. 
what are a few tests you think Amazon should or would run in the next maybe three, four months that you think can give our listings a conversion lift or at least direct the consumer towards buying the right product? Oh, wow. That's a, that's a good question. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting that they started to use AI on reviews. Obviously, we have that in our tools. So, you know, it's, it's nice when we're doing things before Amazon. But, um, you know, um, look, I mean, you know, that's, that's, that's a pretty big, you know, broad question. I would say, you know, at the end of the day, what Amazon is going to focus on is helping our sellers to understand, um, you know, what, what keywords to add, but, but more importantly, how to make sure that customers understand what their product is and convert in a better way. Right. Uh, and then, and then I would say Amazon's goal beyond that is to get those customers who are interested in their product to buy other products. Right. So, um, you know, split testing around, you know, or, or testing around, you know, what, what are other products that, that can be bundled around whatever the customer is buying, I think is clearly aligned with, with Amazon's business objectives, which is to get more money out of a customer. Right. So, if you're looking for, a, a, you know, a mask, um, you know, right now on Amazon, obviously it'll say, hey, you can frequently buy these together. Um, but maybe, you know, maybe there's there's some other tests that they would want to do around that um, or, or at least giving, um, you know, customers, in, you know, sellers insights on, on what those might be uh, in case they have those products or where they could place that in PPC, uh, et cetera, or, or place it on other terms to get their product in front of customers that are more interested in that category, right? So uh, anything that Amazon can do to, um, you know, drive additional sales, attributional sales on the platform, if they can give insights and, and, and give that to sellers, they'll, they'll for sure do that. Um, and then I think, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if there's tests they could do on this with AI, but, but any, um, you, you know, clearly any traffic that comes from outside of Amazon's platform that Amazon wouldn't capture anyway uh, is 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 great for Amazon, right? Because they're getting incremental sales or, from traffic that they, they wouldn't have got. So, um, you know, if you're driving TikTok traffic um, or, or whatever that is, um, you know, maybe understanding at a deeper level, you know, what, you know, the segment of that traffic and how it's converting and then rewarding customers accordingly. Those are kind of areas that I think will help um, you know, push Amazon's business model, right? So that's typically always how I think about it is like, not just sellers, but it's like, what is, what is the, if, how do sellers help Amazon make more money? <laughs> and if, if you can figure that out, that's just what Amazon's going to keep testing, right? It's, it's obvious why I scratched my head for many years. I was like, why is it taking them so long to really ramp up their PPC side? Um, because they were so far behind Google and they just didn't re it almost like they didn't check in their head that it was going to make them so much money, right? It's one of their biggest revenue drivers now. Um, and eventually they caught it onto it and then they pushed that more. And, you know, uh, you've got so many different channels you can do now with PPC. So I, I do think about it from that perspective, like what are the things that they would test that will ultimately help sellers make Amazon more money? Perfect. Thank you for sharing that. Where can our listeners find out more about you and Zangu? Yeah, I mean, you know, you can you can go to my LinkedIn profile. Um, you know, you can find me John Tilly uh, on, on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm typically posting stuff around uh, our category uh, on Amazon. Uh, you can also go to zongu.com. Uh, you can sign up for any of our plans. You get a free trial with that. So, you know, if you're listening and you're like, hey, I just want to at least sign up and, and test whether my listing is the best optimized listing on page one versus my top competitors, you can literally do that in a few minutes. And at least scratch that itch and go, okay, I've got a great listing or run an AI and see if the AI can write a better listing than, than what you currently have. Right. So you can all, you can do that all within your, your trial period of jumping on and checking it out. Um, I'm assuming, you know, we, in terms of a, an offer, I'm sure that's something that, that you can have there and you can just post your link to, to, um, uh, to Zonguru and they can click on that. Um, but I would find, I would say those are the, the main two ways to find us is, uh, come to Zonguru. We have a, a team of experts there that can you can connect with on chat um, or, or LinkedIn profile. Uh, if you want to connect with me, you can come there. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Those are really great questions. Uh, I can definitely see your area of expertise and, and uh, it was a lot of fun. So I appreciate uh, all your questions and your thoughts that's gone into uh, today's podcast.